Thank you for choosing Shooting USA on YouTube. This is a new format for us and we're calling it History's Guns Uncut. Anytime we have a subject matter expert expounding on the virtues of a historical firearm, there is always great content left on the cutting room floor. But thanks to the format of YouTube, we can bring you the full interview. Please enjoy History's Guns Uncut. Okay, so this is the Star AUG or STG 77. Uh, it's a bullpup top rifle, which means the magazine goes in the buttstock behind the fire control group. And what that does is that reduces the overall length of the rifle. This, this is a 20 inch barreled gun, but it's as short as say a, a 12 inch barrel conventional rifle. Um, it is in 5.56. NATO, designed in Austria. It has an integral optic uh, actually made by Swarovski. And this optic's kind of famous for its reticle where it's got just a solid black ring they called the donut of death. And what that meant was if your target, your average size man, was less than 300 meters away, that's, that's what the zero was. He would be larger than that circle and you could just hold that circle right on and, and make your hits. So as long as he wasn't smaller than the circle, then they didn't have to compensate. So Austria was using the 762 NATO, um, basically the FN FAL. That was their main battle rifle, um, which of course is all machine steel. Um, it's, a, it's a great rifle, very reliable. It's worldwide renowned, um, but this took advantage of modern manufacturing techniques. Lots of polymer use in this, aluminum forgings. In 1977, they even adopted translucent polymer magazines, and these are extremely durable, and they've withstood the test of time on those. They, they have typically a 42-round magazine or a 30-round magazine. So bullpups had been around. I don't know when the very first bullpup um, was invented, but the concept I know was tried in World War II with not necessarily um, assault rifles or main battle rifles, but with some other types of weapons. This was probably the first really commercially successful bullpup design. It was adopted by many nations all over the world. Even the U.S. Customs and Border Protection um, issued this rifle um, here in the United States. Um, a lot of police departments had it. And then, of course, the U.S. civilian sales, too. While it wasn't extremely well received in the United States, um, most bullpups have struggled uh, making it in the market. It was nicknamed the Space Gun. Um, you know, the, the space race was still going on in the 70s, and it's radically different than anything else that had ever been seen before. It's very non-traditional. United States tends to be very traditional, well, most most everything, <laughs> but, but definitely when it comes to firearms. With the magazine in front of the fire control group, that's what everyone is used to seeing. That's what is recognizable to them. But when you start moving the magazine back here, it's a little different. But what it does is it allows for an extremely well-balanced rifle. The weight out here is minimal. You just got a little bit of barrel. so all your weight, your fire control group is back here. Your bolt and everything, recoil assembly is up in here. So when you plant it in your shoulder, your shoulder is actually carrying the weight. So if I just support this out here, it's just kind of in, in my shoulder. So it makes it very easy to maneuver. It's light and quick to point because there's very little muzzle weight to it. This gun was designed to be very modular of course, it's um, modern techniques with your, your plastics and your aluminum forgings and whatnot, but you can change barrels. This is a 20 inch barrel. They have a 13 inch or 13.8 inch, like a salt barrel. Um, the civilian market had a 16 and an 18 and a 20 inch barrel. And then they actually had a 24 inch light machine gun barrel that had a bipod built onto it. And it was as simple as pulling your bolt back, hitting your barrel release button right here, and twisting your barrel out. 
So you could go from a 20 or 24 inch barrel down to a 14 or 16 inch barrel, depending on your situation, in literally seconds. Now the whole gun breaks down extremely easily. The barrel just pops out. This takedown lever, it's not a lever, takedown slide, you pull it, there's your receiver. It's an aluminum forging that's machined. The, the optics built into it. And then here's your bolt carrier group. So you could change this 5.56, five, drop in a nine millimeter bolt, a nine millimeter magazine conversion, and a nine millimeter barrel, and go from a 24 inch light machine gun to a short barreled nine millimeter submachine gun. That's, that's all there is to taking it apart right there. The fire control group pops out the back. And the fire control group is actually all plastic. Um, to take that out, there's a little soft spot right here. And you push in on the soft spot and pull the pin. Tilt it out. Here's your fire control group. It's a plastic housing. The hammer's plastic, the sear's plastic. Almost everything is plastic. This is your bolt catch, so it's a last round bolt hold open. Now, while this is cheap and light, it doesn't make for a very good trigger. The plastic rubs against each other, creating a weird squishy friction. And then the sear engagement edge, of course, is rounded because it's plastic, it's not a tool steel. Um, so the break is, it's not a match grade trigger. Um, that's, that's typically everyone's biggest complaint is the trigger pull. There are, of course, um, semi-automatic trigger groups, there's full automatic trigger groups, and then there's select fire trigger groups. So the select fire trigger group, there would be a switch in the bottom. So there's not a switch on the gun like a M16, say, would have where you could go from semi-automatic to fully automatic. To do that in, a, in the AUG, it's just how far you pull the trigger back. But if you want a three round burst, say, you have to pull your trigger pack out, have a burst capable pack, flip the switch here, and then put it back into your gun. So now you only have three round burst. Um, to go back to a fully automatic, you would have to pull it out, switch it back, and put it back in your gun again. Mm. So you've got semi-automatic, full automatic, uh, three round burst, and then the light machine gun version that had the long barrel, of course they used the 42 round magazines, it was actually an open bolt gun. So typically all the rest of the guns fire from a closed bolt operating system. It's a long stroke gas piston system and it fires from a closed bolt. The light machine gun version they actually converted just by swapping parts to an open bolt type of fire system. So with the bullpup design, with the magazine in the back, the barrel is longer than just this. The barrel actually travels all the way back to here. And with this design, it's extremely easy to swap. You lock your bolt back, release your button, twist your barrel, and pull it right out. So now you can see just how long the barrel is. This is a 20 inch long barrel, which is longer than most of your standard battle rifles of today. So this rifle is a conventional design that has the magazine well in front of the trigger group, right? So this is a Colt SP-1, everyone's familiar with this. This gun has the same length barrel as our Star AUG example. They're both 20 inches long, but here's the significant difference. It's considerably shorter in overall length. So one thing about the AUG is its um, simplicity. There's very few controls anywhere on it. You've got your takedown, your magazine release, your bolt handle, your barrel release. This is your safety, simple cross bolt safety. Now this is a machine gun, but you only have safe or fire here. You cannot select if you want semi-automatic or fully automatic with a selector switch. The way it works is the trigger itself, you'll hear a click when the hammer falls here and the, the trigger stops right there. That's semi-automatic. If you want to go fully automatic, you squeeze the trigger farther. And that extra little bit right there will let it go fully automatic. So 
it's all in operator control. You go so far back, it's semi-automatic, squeeze it harder, that's fully automatic. So this is the more modern version of the Steyr AUG. This is the A3 model. The A3 model allows you to have a Picatinny rail, so now you can mount optics or red dots of your choice. You mount flashlights, different types of things. Brings it more up to today's standards of being able to modernize it and use it for mission specific. Of course, this one has the nine millimeter conversion kit, which will fit in most any of the versions. It's a simple drop-in kit. Magazine well adapter goes in where the 5.56 magazine goes. You change the bolt and the barrel, and now you're shooting nine millimeter instead of 5.56. Okay. Thanks again for tuning into the Shooting USA YouTube channel. We hope you enjoyed the content. A couple of notes. Make sure you take advantage of SUSA15 at SnapSafe.com. That's our discount code that saves you 15% on anything from SnapSafe. And that gets to be some big money when you start talking about modular safes and vault doors. Also, if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our new content. As always, a like and a comment helps us with that algorithm. <laughs>